Good morning, everybody. The Lord be with you. As always, the warmest welcome that I can give you uh, to, uh, to church today. Lovely to see everybody, our service, service of Holy Communion, uh, morning prayer, rather, <laughs> uh, and everything you need is in the prayer book or on the screen. So let's, as we join as God's people, begin our worship together with uh, a opening hymn. And the opening hymn is All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Let's stand, remain standing as we sing together. So let us take our seats as we come to confess our sins to God, our Father. And so we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent of mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Mystery Box. Uh, I'm very grateful sometimes, um, or I should say grateful sometimes, that people are very kind. They give us some produce to eat, uh, and uh, that's a little clue as to what's in the uh, Holy Mystery Box. But the verse that we're looking at, and we're going to hear in our reading in a few moments' time, 
is uh, this verse. It says, at the words of Jesus, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. So, to help you guess what's in the holy mystery box, tell me what grows on a vine. Are you sure? It could be tomatoes. Do tomatoes not grow on vines? Okay. What else grows on vines? Do cucumbers grow on vines? I don't know either. <laughs> Anyone know do cucumbers grow on vines? Okay, there's a few heads. You're all right. You got away with that one, Ken. <laughs> Anyone else? Anything else that grows on vines? Okay, so we're going to go with cucumbers or tomatoes or grapes. So what do you reckon I've got in here? Blackberries. Blackberries. That's a good one. Does that mean that raspberries do as well? Gooseberries? I don't know. Anyway, which of these do you think is in the holy mystery box today? What will we go for? We going for grapes? Not tomatoes? No? Not cucumbers? Well, there's one person here today who did gift us a beautiful uh, bunch of these, so I am very grateful. Oh, I tell you, I've come a long way since my first night here in all the puns. It is spreading. Yes, you are dead right. Uh, if you go to the next slide, I have got some lovely grapes in here. And uh, unlike other weeks where by the time I've taken the photograph and come to Sunday where they've been eaten, I did manage to preserve these. But they are very nice. Do you like grapes? Do you think, are they, are they cucumbers? No. no, they're grapes. Would you like a grape? Yeah. Okay, now there's a little bit seed, so be careful with the seeds in them. Mm. Would you like a grape? No? Happy enough? Oh, I like your knitting. That is very nice. Is it a scarf, is it, or what are you going to knit? Scarf. I love the colors, too. Very cool. Bring your knitting to church. <laughs> No, it's lovely, Alva. Yeah, very nice. Would you like anyone else like a grape? Yeah, I, you guessed cucumbers and I did guess. I'm, come, I'm becoming very clever, aren't I? Do I get a, a gold star for that one? Maybe. Have a think of that. I don't know. Are these homegrown or are they shop bought? Homegrown? Yeah. So Anne here was the person that gave us these lovely uh, grapes. So they are actually homegrown. That's a new one on me. Did you know that you can grow grapes in Ireland? Apparently, you can. There you go. Did anyone else know that? Oh, in a greenhouse. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that. Oh, dear. I, I, yeah, okay. But very much. Anyone else like a grape? So when I said it was a communion service, it was a very early version of the communion service. Would you like... There'll be none left, man. No, there's, there's quite a few here. Anyone else like a grape? Oh, sorry. The hand is going up. You pass them down there. They're very nice. So let's, if you want to, anyone else wants one, you can pass them around. Um, thank you, Anne. Um, so tell me about grapes. Okay, so we've discovered that they grow on a, on a vine, okay? And the vine is connected to where? The ground, yeah, exactly, the soil and uh, they have to have all the right conditions. They need lots of, probably, like anything, they need water, and they need heat, and they need all of those things. Am I more or less right? We'll talk about this a bit more in the, uh, in the sermon as well. And if you get all those right, you get a lovely bunch of, of grapes, exactly. What happens if uh, you cut the vine? What would happen to grapes? Yeah, they'd wither, wouldn't they? They'd wither, whatever. And so, in Jesus using this picture, he is talking about the grapes on the vine, and the vine connected to the soil, and he is saying that if we want to grow in faith, if we want to know more about God, then we have to be connected to Jesus, who is the vine. He is the one that connects us with God. So, when we learn about God, when we follow Jesus, then we grow in our faith, just like a lovely bunch of healthy, I was going to say coconuts, um, a lovely... <laughs> A uh, bunch of healthy grapes that grow when they're connected to the right source, the right vine, 
when we are connected to Jesus, we grow in faith as well. And that's what I think the uh, grapes represent for me in the Holy Mystery Box. And we learn a little bit more about that as we hear the reading and as we learn more about it. So I don't know whether they're gone. They're heading on, are they? Oh, they're at the back. Oh, you can send them forward if you want. There you go. Thank you for that blessing, Anne, as well. So we're going to sing a song. And don't forget, the sheets are uh, at the back, as always. But we're going to sing uh, a song uh, that reminds us about following or being followers of Jesus. I'm going to jump up and down, going to spin right around, going to praise your name forever. I think I'd only rate myself a three out of ten for that one because I got lost in the actions, but I could see others were uh, more ahead of me. Andy, question. Want to be seated? There you go. That's a great question. If Jesus is the vine, are we the berries that's growing on the vine? That is a top question, Andy. Do you know that? And I'm going to try and explain that to all the adults in a few moments. But he has kind of nailed what I want to share, is that Jesus is the vine, and he wants us to grow in our faith and to be connected to the vine. So that is an absolutely smashing question. The kids sometimes can ask and put things in a way that us adults can't. Isn't that right? Great question, Andy. Definitely great question. So we're going to prepare ourselves to hear and to receive the Word of God. Oh Lord, open our lips. Oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, Charlotte is going to come and to lead us in our psalm, which is the first psalm for today. And again, we, uh, Charlotte leads the odd verses. We respond in the yellow, even verses on the screen. And again, we'll see this kind of horticultural theme coming through. So psalm number one. Blessed are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the assembly of the scornful. Their delights is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. Like a tree planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, whatever they do, it shall prosper. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not be able to stand in the judgment nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. The Lord, the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall, world without end. Amen. Thanks, Charlotte. And Andrew is going to come and to read uh, from our passage, which you can find on the screen or the weekly sheet. Thanks, Andrew. A reading from John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. And so we stand once again, and we join together in our next hymn, Name of All Majesty, Fathomless Mystery, King of the Angels, King of the Ages by Angels Adore. Let's stand and sing. So I speak in the name of the one that we proclaim as Lord. I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Please be seated. I don't know about you, but it feels like the weeks are slipping by very, very quickly. It doesn't seem like seven weeks since we began uh, the latest part of the Jesus story, looking at the seven I am claims of Jesus which are found in John's gospel. When I started off, I said it would take us to the end of September. And here we are now at the end of September, and we're looking at the seventh I am claim. This time, Jesus is making another bold claim that it is through him and him alone, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through our relationship with God, that we truly find the source of spiritual life and growth and fruitfulness. I'll put the seven claims before us at the end, but they've all been very bold claims that he is the important one. Through him, all these things happen. Now, a few weeks ago, I was saying if you were a farmer or a sheep farmer, then the sermon was for you. If you are a gardener, then this sermon is definitely for you. I'm not a gardener. I can just about cut the little bit of grass at the back of the, the rectory. But if you're a gardener, then I think you will quite easily understand this passage. Although I think if you're not a gardener, I think uh, as long as I can explain it, it is very accessible. Certainly, Andy is the man. I think he has nailed it for us. So thank you, Andy. But in our passage, the I am, the seventh I am, Jesus again is spending time with his disciples. It's during the Last Supper, so he already knows that his arrest and his crucifixion are imminent. He already knows that within a very finite period of time that he will no longer physically be present with the disciples. Remember, they have been following him for three years at this stage. They have been watching. They have been learning. They have been doing. And what a privilege that must have been for them to actually learn and to grow in their faith with the the real Jesus there in front of them. But they're anxious and they're concerned that suddenly Jesus is not going to be with them. Suddenly, the one who has been so instrumental to them in the three years is not going to be there and things are simply going to drift away. And it's into all of this that Jesus begins to speak. And he reassures them and believers since us today, that the ongoing relationship with Jesus, while it may not be with him physically present, that it is still as one that will shape their faith, that will encourage their faith, that will help them grow in their faith. And so it's into all of that that Jesus says these words, I am the true vine and my Father is the gardener. Now, I do know in my limited understanding of gardens that a well-tended garden thrives when plants are rooted in good soil, when they are nourished by sun, and most importantly, when they are cared for by the, their gardener. All these things don't just happen by chance, do they? But a branch or a plant that breaks or isn't nourished or doesn't get water, what happens? It withers away and eventually it dies, doesn't it? I do know that as part of gardening, and maybe this happens this time of year, if anyone is a gardener you can nod at me, but pruning or clipping back is often necessary for new healthy growth that comes uh, in the future. So if that's a reasonably good understanding of gardening, then let's apply what Jesus says. So he is using this and explaining this to do with our spiritual growth. And he is telling us that God is the gardener who tends the vine or the garden with care. We are the branches or the plants. And Jesus is the vine, the source of life and connection to God. And it is through that connection with God that we grow in spiritual ways. So Andy absolutely nailed it. We are the berries, we are the flowers, we are the grapes, but it is the connection to the vine 
or the source of life that we grow in our faith. And Jesus underlines this further in verses 4 or 5. If you have the weekly sheet there, you will see that. Jesus gives us this, uh, this phrase when he says, Abide in me, and I will abide in you. What does that mean? Again, let me uh, tiptoe nervously back into gardening. So a, a garden takes constant work, doesn't it? Yep, if you want to keep the weeds away, you've got to be on top of it. If you want the garden to look well, almost every day you've got to be out working a little bit here and there. If you want the grass to look green, you've got to be out taking the weeds away. So a garden takes constant, almost daily care. And that, I think, is what Jesus is trying to say to us in spiritual terms when he says, abide in me and I will abide in you. Abide simply means maintaining a daily relationship with God, living with an awareness of God's presence in every moment of our life, at work, with our family, in challenges, or in quite solitude. It's a state of trusting God, trusting in His strength and His wisdom to navigate our lives. Sometimes I use the phrase, our faith should not be a one, 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 one thing one day, one hour, once a week, in one place. This is where we come to be nourished, encouraged, to grow in our faith. But the call is to abide in Christ and to bring our faith out into our everyday lives and to have God as part of our everyday lives. So that is what Jesus is saying when he says, abide in me, and when you follow me through God's Spirit, I also abide in you. It's an invitation, but it's also a warning a sobering warning because Jesus says, just as the branches must stay connected to the vine to grow and to bear fruit, we must remain deeply connected to God. Otherwise, spiritually, we shrivel away and eventually we die. So connecting on a Sunday is important. Connecting with God uh, each day is important. It brings vitality and growth and healthiness in our walk of faith. There are many reasons why we might become disconnected from God. Life can be overwhelming. We can struggle to make time for God, maybe through illness or loss or disappointment. Our relationship with God begins to drift. Or maybe we're just simply busy. We get distracted. We have different priorities through life and work and relationships. At times, we may even choose to walk away from God. But that is never a closed thing because that invitation that Jesus says is to come back, abide in Him, and I will abide in you. And what happens when we abide in Christ, when we are walking in faith, when we are followers, followers of God, when we relate and in our relationship with the living God? Or what happens at church when its life is Christ-centered, when it's abiding in Christ, when it is growing in faith? Well, Jesus says we will bear fruit, not physical fruit, but spiritual fruit, things in our lives that will show that we are more Christ-like. Paul says it beautifully, the Apostle Paul in Galatians 5, when he gives us a list of the fruits of the Spirit, and he describes the fruits of the Spirit, the things that come as we grow in faith and become more Christ-like, things like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. All those things reflect something of God's character. All those things reflect something of God's character in us. Over time, a garden shows the gardener's hand. Over time, we show something of the gardener's hand, God the gardener, in our lives when we are abiding in Him and He and us. And sometimes this growth takes work. Sometimes this nurture takes time. A garden doesn't usually just happen overnight, does it? It takes many weeks and months and even years to come to fruition. The same in us as we become more Christ-like. It is a steady, gentle process as the work of the Holy Spirit within us changes us to become more Christ-like. And sometimes it is painful. Sometimes it is removing things from our lives or allowing God to remove some things from our lives to prune even what looks like healthy branches. But it is also an end, a means to an end where God is removing something so that we may grow even more beautiful in our likeness of Him, or even to give space for an unexpected blessing that comes into our lives as God changes us and shapes us through the work of the Holy Spirit. So I am the true vine, 
is the seventh claim of Jesus today. Through him, we find the source of life and the opportunity to grow in faith. And as we conclude the seven I am ams uh, found in John's gospel, again, let me just sum up these seven statements because they reveal very deeply who Jesus is and claims to be. I am the bread of life. He is the one who sustains us. I am the light of the world. He is the one who guides us. I am the good shepherd. He is the one who protects us. I am the resurrection and the life. He is the one that gives us hope. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that leads us to the Father. I am the true vine. He is the one who invites us into a deep connection with God. His claims invite us into our relationship, a very deeply personal and beautiful one. It's a relationship that if we allow it and embrace it, is transformative and is eternal. As we assess each claim, I'm going to leave uh, the last words to the Christian author C.S. Lewis. He writes this in his uh, book, Mere Christianity. He says, a man who was merely a man and said the sort of things that Jesus said wouldn't be a great moral teacher. He'd either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he'd be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either the man was and is the Son of God, or else he is a madman or something worse. This is usually the way that it is summed up. Jesus, as he makes these claims, he's either a liar, he's either a lunatic, or he is Lord. He is who he says who he is. And so as we hear these seven claims, as they are set before us, as we engage and think about who Jesus is each time we meet, each day, I guess that's what is ultimately put before us. For us, is Jesus a liar, a lunatic, or do we profess him in our own life as Lord of all? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing the truth of your Son, Jesus, of these I am statements. And as we reflect on each of them, help us, I pray, to respond in faith, to respond in trust, to respond in obedience, and to embrace who Jesus is, the Lord and Savior of our life today and every day. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. We're going to stand and join in our hymn of response, Fruitful Trees, the Spirit Song. We affirm our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we come to a time where we pray together. Let us pray. And as we gather in one heart and one mind to pray, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And the collect for today, which is the prayer assigned to each Sunday, today being Trinity Sunday, the 17th after Trinity. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face. And this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in our prayers, we pray for the church, we pray for the world, we pray for each other. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, the true vine, who invites us into a deep abiding relationship with him. And as we hold that before us, we pray for our church. We pray for this union of parishes. For each of the three churches that make up this union for Kill and Rathmore and Nace. We pray for all local churches. We pray for our Diocese of Meath and Kildare. In our cycle of prayer, we pray your blessing, Lord, upon our Bishop, Bishop Pat, upon Earl, her husband. We pray today for the Julianstown Union. We pray for the rector, Catherine Poulton and for the people and each home that make up that union, including my own parents who are part of that church. We pray for our diocesan synod, which meets next Saturday. We pray that as our synod goes about its work, as we hear of all that goes on across our diocese, as we think about finances, as we think about all the other things that go to make up that day, that at the very heart it would be an opportunity to share fellowship together. We remember too that we are part of a wider church, so we pray beyond our shores for the Church of Greenland and for the Church of North India. We pray that wherever your church meets, that your church and your followers may remain firmly rooted in Christ, allowing his life to flow through us. Help us to support one another in our spiritual journeys, encouraging each other to grow in love and joy and peace. And may we bear fruit that reflects your character, bringing light and hope to our communities. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, we lift up our world, our land, and our community to you a world searching for meaning and connection. 
We pray for the leaders of our land, for our president, for all in authority. We pray for the leaders of many different nations. We pray that each leader at whatever level leads that they would guide with wisdom and compassion, nurturing communities that abide in truth and love. We continue to pray for peace in the troubled parts of our world and most especially we pray for peace in that part of the world that we hear so much through our Bible readings and stories. And help us as a community to reach out to those who feel disconnected, offering them the invitation to know Jesus as the source of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving Father, we bring before you ourselves and those who are sick, are suffering, are grieving, are struggling in any way today. And we take a few moments of personal prayer to bring ourselves and those who we carry in our hearts before the living God. Heavenly Father, you know the prayers that we pray quietly and personally. And so as they are personal to you in a general way, Lord, I would pray that in our pain, may we feel your comforting presence. May we in those that we pray for know the assurance that we are not alone, that you are with us, that we as your, you, we as your community journey through all of life together. We ask for your healing touch upon us and for strength to endure. Help us to abide in you, finding hope and peace in your love, even amidst the trials of life. Surround us and those that we pray for with support and kindness from our communities, that we may be uplifted and encouraged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we simply ask, merciful Father, that you would accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We're going to join together in our closing hymn, which is also our offertory hymn. And uh, it is the hymn off the top of my head, I can't remember what number. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we turn to Christ in you. I don't know if you're very good at details, you'll notice that three of our hymns today were written by Timothy Dudley Smith. Well done, Timothy Dudley Smith. That was only by fluke, but anyway, our God's lady, I'm not sure. But it is a lovely hymn. We turn to Christ in you who hear his call today. Let's stand and worship together. <laughs>
And so we remain standing for our closing prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the life and truth that is found in Jesus, the true vine. Help us to abide in him daily, trusting in his strength to guide us through life. May we cultivate a spirit of dependence on him, allowing his love to bear fruit in our lives. May our hearts be stirred to respond to Jesus' claims with faith and action, living as his followers in a world in need of hope. And as we bring our faith into our lives each day, as we think of those that we love and those that we pray for today, we pray God's deep and richest blessings upon us and them. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen.